So, dead TD5 ECU, which is common. <laughs> um, so, just repairing this one and then uh, plugged it in. And I'm not getting any engine management light, no fuel pump, and I can't read via OBD. So, it's like it's dead, but it's getting power into it. Uh, the 12 volts is supplying everything. But when I check the voltages on these two regulators here, you have one of them, which is for the engine 5 volt supply and the throttle pedal 5 volt supply. So like all your sensors and that. And then you get the other one, which is for supplying all your components inside the ECU with 5 volt. Well, one of them's got is not delivering five volts, and I'm checking on it, and it's getting a short. Like you get these capacitors here, one for each va five volt regulator, and one of them's getting like a fifty ohm short on it. But there's that much stuff in there to find out where you're getting the short. And not only that, when you flip it over, see so you've got all these little capacitors, surface mount capacitors, and there's hundreds of them. They're all on the 5 volt bus, so to try and diagnose it, really, you've got, I mean, like, I've already lifted one of these capacitors to see if it was that shorter, because they are common for going them, especially on the uh, supply to the engine. Um, but then you'd have to try and lift one at a time all these little surface mount ones to try and find the short. So, I found a quicker way of doing it. But I'll just show you the resistance on that first and that it's not giving out a 5 volt first. So I've got it wired up. This is just a full loom of a vehicle for a TD5 with the instrument cluster. And one there for a 2.2 TDCI and one there for a 2.4 TDCI. So just basically powering it up anyway. So I've got the voltmeter there and I've got that on the negative on the big power supply which I've got there. So if I power it up, turn it on, I can then uh, get my test probe and then on the 5 volt on that side, I'm not actually getting no volts whatsoever. So that's the supply for all the components, the ICs and everything in the ECU itself. And then this is the supply for the sensors and the throttle pedal. And if I check that, I'm getting 5 volts there as normal and it's not coming up on the dashboard it's dead same as like it is in the vehicle so that's that so if i knock that off so now if i measure the ohmage as well uh, i can just measure it over this capacitor because the left is the negative and that's the five volt supply from that five pin regulator for what supplies all the components in the ecu so i'll just measure that as well so I'll just put that on the 200 ohm range, the lowest range. Put that in there. So we've got in that one on the right hand side over that capacitor. That's open circuit, so that's all right. But if we go on this one, which is the one which is supplying all the five volt components and chips in the ECU, do it over that. See, there it goes, it's 55 ohms, pretty much, which is not far off a short circuit on the 5 volt bus, so that's not good, is it? <laughs> so I've got one of these, AliExpress Special. <laughs> it's a thermal camera. So the idea is, turn this on until it warms up. And you can get these AliExpress. This was 113 quid, this, so not too expensive. There you go, thermal camera. So the idea is, I don't know well you can see it on there, turn the power on, on the board, and then you can see hot spots. So if we go closer there, you can see that's getting mad hot, that chip there, isn't it? which is that one there. See it, I know there's other components getting hot, but that's normal, but that's getting extremely hot, that. And everything else looks pretty normal, but that one is too hot. 
So we turn it off the power supply again. See how hot that is. Hotter than anything else. So that one is suspect, that chip there. So I'm gonna see if that's gone short circuit. I'll probably just lift one of the legs up first off the five volt or the negative. So we'll have a look at that. So yeah, it was this chip here. So we go to the positive on the five volt output from that regulator, which is on this side of the capacitor there. And the continuity again with the other meter. We get dead shot on that side. So that's the five volt. And that is 49 ohms. So that'll be the negative. I know that's a negative anyway. So I can lift either of them legs up. I'll probably lift the positive up and then see if it's short circuit in that chip. <laughs> just get this in here and I'll just lift that 5 volt leg up before I take the full chip out so I've just lifted that one leg up on the 5 volt so yeah you can see just where I've just lifted that one leg just on that side there just lifted it ever so slightly so we're going to meter on it again, check the resistance and continuing it in. Get the positive 5 volt output from that regulator. And then this is the earth, so there's no short there now. That's a high resistance on that, so that's a good sign. We've lifted that leg there. But this is the 5 volt going into it underneath. And that is coming from there. So we're getting continuity to there. So that's good. So it is that chip which is short circuited. So I'll lift that, replace it, and hopefully it should fix it. So that's that chip replaced. So now we can get it back on the test rig again and see if it powers up. So that's on that. Turn the ignition off. Power supply on. Right. Turn the ignition on. And look at that. Happy days. And you can hear that high frequency noise, what you get from the TD5 inverter. So it's all good. So I'll chuck it on the vehicle and try it in that. But I know it's going to work anyway. Because that is all good. Happy days. Yeah, so that chip that I ended up going there, which is there. 
Yeah, it's come, they are coming for going them actually. And there's two more of them there as well. Um, but they do mark them up differently on the early MSBs to the NNNs. Um, but it's a Hexschmidt inverted trigger, uh, same as the 74 series. So they're quite common to get, they just mark them up differently like they do in ECUs. Luckily, I could still power this up without frying anything on the normal supply. Whereas if you do get issues with heavy short circuits burning stuff out, you're better off if you replace the burnt out components, power it up with a power supply, put it on 12 volts, but put it on no amps, and then just turn it up ever so slightly so it's on a few milliamp, and then get the camera on it then and then just have a look and then just creep up the ampage slightly because otherwise you'll fry some of it. <laughs> so that's another way of doing it as well. And then like these regulators, the common, not failing, but you get these capacitors. So that one, you know, if you've got a throttle problem, say if you've got a driver's demand fault or no throttle whatsoever, these can go semi-short circuit or actually short circuit or they can go open circuit and give too much voltage so your throttle pedal won't work because it's getting not a true 5 volts and obviously that one that's more of a linear 5 volt lap because it's got to be dead nice for all the components in the ECU so that does go down but not, not as common as that one and the regulators can go down but they're not very common for going. This one's like five pin one, and that one's a three pin one. When I replace that one, I put like an higher ampage one in, like I do with all the MOSFETs. Cause you got like um, all your MOSFETs for each injector. And then you've got like your trigger return for all the injectors and they're on MOSFETs. And I put high ampage ones in if they blow, but I'll probably do another video on them at a later date. But like I say on this, if you try to trace like a short circuit, you've got so many, so many little tiny surface mount capacitors what run on the 5 volt and some of them can go short circuits, flipping loads of them. So imagine trying to lift all them one by one, looking for a short. So yeah, you can even look on the camera on the back of it as well. But you'll get, these will go warm, these three surface mount resistors here because they're actually for draining the big capacitor on the other side, which feeds the injectors. That's like 80 volts that. So when you turn the ignition off, them three resistors on the back, they drain that. So you're so you not likely to get a shock. So yeah, there you have it. Oh yeah, and it's a multimeter as well. <laughs> so you've got that. And then it's all touchscreen as well. So yeah, pretty good really, isn't it? There she leads with it as well. Don't know how accurate it is as a multimeter, but I just use it as a thermal camera, me. Does the job. Happy days. I'll try it in the car now, isn't it? Happy days. Don't be bothered. Hello, mate.